think of this as like a microscope. And when we have a microscope set really far away, we can kind of make out a picture, but it's really fuzzy. And as we zoom in on the microscope, things come into clarity. Welcome back to another adventure in the garage. My name is Luke and I'm here to help you sort out how to use your manually selecting multimeter. How can we kind of tell the difference? Well, it should be on the packaging or the owner's manual, but a manually selecting multimeter is going to have a whole bunch of different settings and it can be kind of overwhelming. So I'm going to be here to help break that down for you. There are lots and lots of options for manually selecting multimeters. There's two reasons why you might be purchasing one. One for the cost effectiveness of it or two, there are plenty of professionals out in the field that simply prefer a manually selecting multimeter. Yours could look more like this or like this. I'm going to keep the video somewhat general so that you can just apply the concepts here to whatever specific meter you happen to be using. And then of course, as always, let me know down in the comment section if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. This video is helpful. Give me a thumbs up. And if it was not, give me a thumbs down. I always appreciate the feedback. Let's go ahead and get started. There are going to be three main types of measurements we're going to have to focus on that are going to be a range of values of units that we're going to take a look at. The first is going to be voltage and voltage can be broken down into AC or DC. We're going to be looking at current. Your meter will measure also AC or DC current and then there's going to be resistance. I really suggest if you're new to meters, get a little bench set up, get a couple little things like some batteries and a little motor or a light bulb and practice your testing in a controlled environment where you can sit down and look through your owner's manual or you can go through YouTube with your meter before you go out and try to actually troubleshoot electronics in a real world scenario. Another important thing is going to be your test leads and the ports. Make sure you're paying attention to the labeling of your ports. Your black lead will always go into the common port and then you could have two ports total three or four depending on your meter and your red lead will be the one to hop around depending on what you're trying to measure. If we take a look at some of the symbols here these should be universal to all of the multimeters out there. We can see this one is a V with a squiggly line that's a sine wave indicating this is for measuring voltage AC, then we have voltage DC. So this takes care of all of our voltage ranges. Then we have amperage DC. And here is also A for amps, 10. So this covers all of our amperage. And then down here, this is all of our resistive values. So you can kind of break up your meter into those sections and that will kind of help. It's a lot of information, right? It's very cumbersome, but that's the way that we want to be looking at this. Now that we have that broken down, let's go ahead and take a look at our values and what they mean. So we can see for our AC voltage, there's a 200 and a 600. Well, what does that mean? The 200 is saying up to 200 volts is the value that we can measure with this setting. Say for instance here, out of my house, I have 120 volts. I can use this 200 volt setting because that's within the value of this. If I was gonna try to measure maybe something for my dryer or out of a generator that was like a 240 volt circuit or something is around the world that have 240 coming straight out of the wall, I would select this 600 volt setting because that would be within the range of that. 600 would be the most voltage that I can measure. A lot of them are rated for 600 volts. There should be a category rating on your meter and that will let you know 600 is generally the maximum and less. So keep an eye out for that. But up to 600 volts I can do there. So let's go ahead and take a look at a AC voltage measurement and what that would look like. I would have my ports, my leads in the proper ports, one in COM and one in here, that V is for voltage. I don't need a load or anything to check for voltage. And I don't need my leads to be a certain way because it's AC. I can measure in either direction. I'm showing 119.9 volts. I can measure this the other way and it should have the same value. That's kind of what that would look like. Now, if I had it on the 600 volt setting, I'm going to lose that decimal place. So the resolution of my measurement is going to go down, but I'll still see 119. It's going to round it to the nearest whole number. 
That's for our AC measurement. Next up, we have DC voltage that we can go ahead and take some measurements with. This lightning bolt's letting you know whatever you're trying to measure could be a live circuit. Be careful. It is electricity, so please always be very careful. This is our volts DC, and this is our ranges here available to us. When we see a little M like that, that's gonna be for milli, as opposed to a capital M, it's gonna be for mega. I've got us a DC voltage source of 32 volts. Now you're using your meter because you probably don't know what to expect. You don't know what kind of voltage you have there. Something that you can do is just start at the highest value and work your way down until you get the resolution of the measurement that you would like. So I can put my black to black and my red to red. Now, if I have my leads reversed on a DC measurement, I'm gonna see a negative sign pop up there. That should be universal for all of our meters. In 600, I can see 32 volts. If I wanted more detail, I would start to work my way down. Now I have a decimal place. Now I can read to the tenths. Oh. And now I got an OL. OL can stand for a few things. Open loop, out of limits. I'm here selected on the 20, but my voltage is at 32. So I'm outside of the range that this setting is set for. At 200, I get 32.1 volts. Go down to 20, I lose that. We wanna be really careful when we're using a manually selecting meter. If we see an OL or something like that, it doesn't mean that there's no voltage there. It could just mean that we're not selected to the proper range. So that's a 32 volt source, that's how that looks. Let's bring our voltage down even further. Now we've got like a five volt source. Let's see how things look. We can start again at 600 and kind of work our way down to see what a five volt source would look like. 600, it's showing four. Now we know that it's five. You know, see it bounce back because the resolution isn't very clear. Think of this as like a microscope. And when we have a microscope set really far away, we can kind of make out a picture, but it's really fuzzy. And as we zoom in on the microscope, things come into clarity. Same thing with the resolution of our meter. I'm at 600. So think of 600 as really kind of far away for things kind of really big. And then as we go down in our settings, we're going to see that image more and more clearly. Up to 200 volt setting, I have 5.0 volts. And as we go down, we'll get more clarity. Now I can see to the hundredths, 5.01 volts. And lastly, I have a two here. If I go there, it should come back as OL because it's out of the limitations. Lastly, 200 millivolts. So remember that's 0.2 volts. I've got 70 millivolts coming out of here. Let's go through the settings and see what that's gonna look like. We're seeing like a 0.1 kind of flashing on here. It knows something's going on. Bring it down, 0.05. Okay, it's getting closer. If we go to the up to two volts, now we have to the thousandth place. And then if we go to 200, now it's changed. Our units are in millivolts down here in the corner. Sometimes you'll have that display, sometimes you won't. Notice like how we have DC up in the upper left-hand corner as a reminder that we're in our DC settings and we have millivolt here. That may or may not be the case for your meter. Next thing that I wanna go through is gonna be our amperage measurements. All of the measurements for this are rated for DC only. Even check out for the one that says 10 amps. It lets us know on the meter, hey, this is rated for only DC. Keep that in mind. Look at your owner's manual. Always verify and double check what you're trying to measure so you can make sure to get accurate test results. Something that's gonna be a bit different when we're making current measurements is we do need a load and we need to make our measurements in series with our circuit. So the way that I like to think about it is that we're gonna use our multimeter as a jumper wire to complete the circuit to measure our current. Something to keep in mind too is, and this word can be a little bit confusing with all this labeling going on down here. This is saying this is rated for up to 200 milliamps. Anything greater than 200 milliamps, I need to switch this port over to this guy where it's rated for 10 amps. And then it's only rated at 10 amps for a max of 30 seconds every 15 minutes. I'm gonna start big and then work my way down. So I'm at the 10 amp setting. I have 
have my leads in the proper port. And then what I can do is I can complete my circuit, apply power to things like a motor. Current can be deceptive because you would think that that motor would take a lot more current. It's only taking about half an amp of current as opposed to this light bulb here. That's taking over two amps. That's taking four times the amount of current than it is for this motor. Now this motor, he's not loaded. That's part of the reasons why it's not taking very much current. If there was more resistance to our motor, we could see the current draw start to go up as I give that motor resistance, right? So kind of cool. So you can use current to troubleshoot motors. If it's taking a lot more current than it's rated for, could be an indication that there's an issue. I have some smaller loads down here that are gonna be within our 200 milliamp DC range. And I've got some really, really small currents and let's see how small we can get it to. Some of these meters, like this one, you'll see that funky U on there. That's for a micro. That's an incredibly tiny amount of current that this meter can actually read which is very impressive. We'll go ahead and go to the 200 milliamp. Now that we're gonna be working with currents under 200 milliamps, we can go ahead and switch our port leads back over and we can go ahead and see what we're measuring. Something important to remember, our units have changed. This is saying it's displaying in milliamps. So then we've got a smaller load here. What's that at? 12 milliamps. Well, I could even go to this 20 milliamp setting to get more clarity out of my reading. Now I can read it to the hundred place and now I have 12.14 much more accurate and let's go down to an even smaller current value this is 1.2 milliamps so I think that would be like 1200 microamps and so I can put this down to the 2 milliamp reading and now it's giving me the clarity look at that accuracy 1.191 milliamps or about 1191 microamps so there's that for us now we're on to resistance. Our resistance symbol is going to be this little horseshoe guy here or an omega symbol. But something that you can do for reading resistance, like our others, we can start high and then work our way down to get more and more clarity. Our measurement is coming in back at 0 0.01 mega ohm. We want to keep that in our head for our decimal places. And that can be kind of confusing. 0 0.01 mega ohm, think of a mega as million ohms. If we had a one over here, that would be a million. So this is 10,000 normal ohms. Let's keep going down. Now we have a K, K is for kilo. Now we can see 9.9 .9 kilo ohm. Our 20K setting should give us some better resolution. And it does, now we can read it to the hundredths. We have 9,980 ohms. And then our next one down is gonna be out of range. Once you get a little more practice, get a little more comfortable with it, okay, you, you see 1K ohm. Okay, now I know in my head there's a thousand ohms. I have a 2K setting here. Why don't I just skip to that one? And now I know I'll get the best resolution I can. And so this is saying we have 985 ohms. And then if I go to the 200 setting, I'm out of range. Then we can do hop over to this last one. We have 0.1K, so that should be 100. So let's go to our 200 setting. We have 98.9 ohms. Thank you for joining me in another adventure on the garage. Please like, ring the bell, notifications, do your thing, and I'll catch you on the next one.